So Apple just concluded its Wonderless event and we have a lot to talk about. We have the Apple Watch Series 9, we have the Apple Watch Ultra 2. I'm gonna talk about that very briefly towards the end of this video, but I'm primarily gonna focus on the iPhone 15 slash iPhone 15 Plus and even the 15 Pro and Pro Max. But kicking things off with the iPhone 15 lineup, pretty much all the leaks and rumors are pretty much true. We have the inclusion of the Dynamic Island, so it's not exclusive to the Pro features, which is a good thumbs up. And we have the inclusion of the 48 megapixel camera too as well. Uh, I thought Apple was just going to keep that for the pros, but we have it for the regular models this time. And the inclusion of Type-C. When I saw Apple just officially announced Type-C on the iPhone, I was like, man, let us rejoice. Because now we can charge Android devices, iPads, MacBooks with the same connectors. So USB Type-C is a big deal on the iPhone. And yes, it is USB 2.0. So yes, it is Type-C, but it's a slower version of Type-C. But needless to say, for the average consumer, this is still a big thumbs up. And it's not like with Lightning, where it was a proprietary cable. USB Type-C is relatively everywhere. Pretty much any product you get today is Type-C. But we have a faster version of this Type-C on the Pros, but more about that in a little bit. And also, we have the enhancements of the SOS. So we have the roadside assistance, which is even further improving SOS connectivity. Believe it or not, we have a brand new design going for this one. We have a infuted glass aluminum design. I'm not sure if this is frosted glass that we typically see on the Pro Model iPhones. So it is good to have that aluminum and frosted glass back because that shiny back, it gets all smudged up. It just doesn't look that good throughout time. So having this frosted glass back gives a more premium design and I'm all for that. It's still glass and glass still breaks regardless of the durability. It's getting stronger, but glass is still glass. Now all these features apply to the 15 plus, which is gonna come in at 6.7 inch, while the regular iPhone 15 comes in at 6.1 inch. So I think this year, People are gonna go with the Plus model or the regular models in general just because you have Dynamic Island, you have USB Type-C, you have all the essential features and you still have that 48 megapixel shooter. So this is gonna be a very strong year for the regular models this year. And in terms of the color options, we have more of these pastel, pastel colors this year. So we have blue, we have pink, we have yellow, we have this minty green and we have black. So unfortunately there is no starlight this year and uh, these colors are so light that you might not really care too much, but the best thing you could probably do is get the blue because it looks so similar to the white. Not all wallpapers look good, but not as good as my wallpaper. This is my 14 Pro Max. You guys can download my wallpaper pack. Links will be down below. And I am working on another wallpaper pack for the release of the iPhone 15 series. So stay tuned for that one. Now, in terms of pricing, it still remains the same at the $7.99 price tag. For the 15 plus 899 and i think for this year in particular you're getting a way more better bargain compared to the 14 and 14 plus because it was so similar to the iphone 13 and in terms of storage configurations you have 128 256 and 512. now i would say people who get the standard iphones are for the people that don't want to spend over a thousand dollars for a phone you want a good iPhone, a rock solid iPhone without breaking the bank too much. Where things get tricky is where you compare the 15 versus let's say the 14 Pro, the regular models. That's where things get a little bit lopsided a little bit, but stay tuned for that video. I've got to do my testing to see how it's going to perform. And of course we have the A16 chip, same thing like the iPhone 14 Pro. So comparison on that is going to be very interesting actually. But moving on to the 15 Pro, I was more excited for this one. I'm more of a pro guy. I like the telephoto lens. I like the promotion. And with the 15, it makes it even better. With the introduction of titanium, completely removing the stainless steel material of the 14 Pro series, you have titanium. And titanium is far more superior because it's more durable, it's lighter, and even the inside components of the 15 is made of, of aluminum, so it's making the phone even more lighter. So this is the lightest pro iPhone Apple has ever made yet. Um, I'm curious to see how it's gonna wear throughout time. Is it gonna chip? Is it gonna show any scratches? It shouldn't, but you never know. You, you, real life scenarios always kick in. So that titanium finish, especially with the frosted glass back, looks absolutely stunning. Um, according to the Apple ads, of course, they're gonna make anything look good, but I gotta see how it looks in real life to see 
how that design is going to scream. So, and looking at this finish, and actually looking at this finish, it makes me realize that we're not going to get another big design like this. So when the iPhone 16 come out next year, are we going to get something that's going to top off this year? I don't think so. There's going to be some features, but the titanium is the star of the show. It looks good. It actually matches my Apple Watch Ultra. So if you have an Apple Watch Ultra, you could probably look at it and kind of get an idea on how this is going to look like. You guys can see I even have a titanium Apple Watch Band 2 to kind of correlate with this video. And since this is the Pros, we have the A17 Pro chip. So Apple's getting rid of that Bionic name in and having with the Pros. And um, so this is gonna bring speed improvements across the board way faster than the 14, bringing even more efficiency. And it's coming in at just three nanometers. So this is impressive in the technological, <laughs> in the technology standpoint. So. That is pretty insane, how, how thin and small these chips are getting. And in terms of the cameras exclusively to the Pro Max model, you can zoom in even further. So essentially, Apple pointed this out, it's like having seven cameras in your pocket because you have so many focal lenses. The regular Pros, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to zoom in that far um, optically. You can zoom in digitally, but digitally is gonna tend to compress the quality a little bit. But I'm gonna be doing a camera test, testing it out if you're gonna even need the Pro Max model. So you guys wanna subscribe to the channel, you guys don't wanna miss that at all. And of course, just like last year with the 14 Pro, you have the 48 megapixel main camera. So it's more advanced, bringing in more levels of details and colors. So just overall camera enhancements that you're getting. But one thing that was interesting, spatial video capture. So this is for the Apple Vision Pro. It is set to release early next year. So essentially with spatial video capture, it's like recording 360 video. So with the Apple Vision Pro, you could be able to look around the environment. So yeah, that's something that is for another day once we get Apple Vision Pro. And of course, we have that action button removing the mute switch. The mute switch is available on the regular models, but for the pros, we have that action button. So it's gonna allow you to set certain actions. So for instance, you can have it set to a silent mode, do not disturb or activate the camera, activate a flashlight, voice memo, translate, shortcut, or even accessibility. So as soon as you press that button, it's gonna activate whatever you set that action to. And I think this is far more better than just limiting yourself with the mute switch. And just like as I mentioned, towards the beginning of the video, we have USB Type-C, same thing with the Pros, but you get even better, even faster USB Type-C here on the Pros. So you have USB 3, which is gonna bring in 10 gigabits. Unfortunately, this is not Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt brings in 40 uh, gigabits. This is such a huge leap into data speeds 20 times faster compared to Lightning. And the battery life, the batteries has gotten bigger this year. Um, Apple claims that this is gonna last nine more hours compared to the 12 Pro Max, uh, comparing that to the 15 Pro Max. In terms of the 15 Pro, you can get up to six more hours of video playback compared to the 12 Pro. And Apple is comparing the iPhone 12 is because, well, people are not upgrading their iPhones every single year as they usually do. Of course, I am gonna be doing a battery drain test even doing a charge test to see, you know, how fast the phones can charge and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing a lot. I'm gonna be working overtime to give you guys the content and the information and knowledge that you need to know when buying these iPhones because it's your hard earned cash. You wanna be able to make the right purchase. And for the most part, that's basically it for the pros. And I would say for the pros, this is targeting to photographers, videographers, people who want to be able to utilize the telephoto lens to be able to zoom in um, 120 millimeters. Um, also, you have your ProRes, your Pro Raw. So all your photography features are here. And even the bezels are thinner too. Uh, the bezels are thinner. You have the titanium finish. You have that action button. The pros are for people who really want the best of the best of the iPhone, but they are definitely gonna pay for it because the pricing actually remained the same for the 15 Pro starting at $1,000 for 128 gigabytes. But if you want the 15 Pro Max, they increased the storage to 256, but the price saw a increase in price. So it's gonna start at $1,200 and it goes all the way up to one terabyte. Now, there were some rumors saying that Apple's gonna go with two terabytes. I got that one wrong, but we got one terabyte. And I think that's the one I'm gonna go with this year. I'm gonna go with one terabyte Pro Max. Um, I'm not sure the color yet. 
The colors come in natural titanium, there's blue titanium, you have white titanium, and you have black titanium. So titanium, name it across the board here. The white titanium and the natural titanium look so identical to one another. Essentially, we have gray, we have gray, a dark gray, and a super dark gray. So all these just grayed out, basically. But um, that natural titanium looks stunning. Although I still want to see these phones in real life. Before I go, I want to talk about the accessories, starting with the cases. Apple has discontinued leather cases just to help out the environment. It's replaced with this fine woven case. It's still expensive at $60. In terms of the silicone case, they're still available. You can get it for the 15 Pro. And ironically, for the AirPods Pro 2, you have USB Type-C instead of Lightning. Very quickly, talking about the Apple Watches, Apple revealed the Series 9 Apple Watch. It looks cool. You have the double tap where you can be able to answer and end phone calls just by tapping your finger here and by pinching. But nothing blew me away, really. If you have a Series 8 or even the Apple Watch Ultra 1, you're going to be perfectly fine. You're not missing out. And even with the Ultra 2, it would have been nice to introduce a black color. But we didn't get that. We just got a chip upgrade, the 3000 nits of brightness, which is pretty impressive. I want to see how bright that can get uh, compared to the series, uh, well, the Ultra one. And uh, other than that, it's such a minuscule upgrade. But uh, maybe if you have a Series 6, you could probably upgrade. Maybe it's time. Both the 15 and the 15 Pros will be available for pre-order this week, Friday, on the 15th, with the release date coming out September 22nd. So, of course, I'm going to be getting them day one and doing my testing right away. So, you guys don't want to miss that. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what you guys think and drop a like on this video. It helped me out tremendously.